Tonight, 193 cases of COVID-19 recorded in the last 24 hours, taking the total of positive cases on the island to 5,588. 70 bed mobile field hospital donated by the U.S. government at the National Chest Hospital earlier today. This is not just a building that is devoid of critical equipment. It comes equipped with very important tools for the response. Still tonight, several persons arrested in Seaview Gardens last night after an attack on a police team that went to enforce the Noise Abatement and Disaster Risk Management Act. And students in Montego Bay receive school supplies as they prepare to start school on October 5. My son was selecting to get some school supplies and I was Oh, I feel relief because actually I didn't get prepared for this school term because of the corona. Good evening. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported that the country has recorded 193 positive cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, taking the overall total of positive cases on the island to 5,588. The Health Ministry has also reported that one more patient has died from the virus, taking the total of COVID-19 deaths to 77. Now the deceased is said to be a 58-year-old woman from the parish of Manchester. Meanwhile, the new COVID-19 cases, ranging in age from 11 months to 84 years, includes 91 men and 101 women, while one patient is still under investigation. The cases are from Kingston and St. Andrew with 81 cases, St. Catherine with 42, St. Anne 14, St. James 17, Trelawney, one case, St. Elizabeth, six cases, Hanover, one case, Portland, three cases, St. Mary, six, St. Thomas, five, Westmoreland, six cases, and Clarendon, ten cases. Forty-six additional persons have recovered from the virus, taking the total of recovered persons to 1,490. The country now has a total of 3,934 active cases. The ministry also reported that 113 persons have been hospitalized with the virus, 37 are moderately ill and 8 critically ill. In news from the capital, a 70-bed mobile field hospital donated by the United States government was handed over to the Jamaican government at the National Chest Hospital in St. Andrew earlier today. Now, this is in an effort to help fight the coronavirus, COVID-19, especially with the recent rise in the number of COVID-19 cases island-wide. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tofton, in his remarks, said the field hospital came equipped with very important tools. The field hospital handheld thermometers and patient beds. So, in other words, this is not just a building that is devoid of critical equipment. It comes equipped with very important tools for the response. Those that are being donated here today at a cost of approximately 12 million to the people of Jamaica, uh, frankly speaking, could not have come at a better time. Uh, those who track what is happening as it relates to the COVID journey that we are traveling on uh, would recognize that just a few weeks ago we declared uh, community transmission which is a phase of the virus that means more persons have the virus as a consequence more are susceptible to getting the virus and the response that is required as a result of this means more infrastructure and so the facility here has come at the right time even though ideally we would prefer no one uses it. Dr. Tufton also said that part of the government's recovery plan is to increase its capacity relating to resources and hospital care. Even though it is expected that the majority of persons who have been affected by the virus will recover, 
and will not recover in an institution such as this one, they'll recover at home, we have seen, as expected, an increase in the numbers that require hospital care. And one of the greatest fears that any public health system has when it comes to this pandemic is to be in a position where persons require hospital care and there's no hospitals or beds or equipment to treat with them. So for this reason, part of our recovery plan will need to increase our capacity in terms of resources, uh, hospital care, and in terms of frontline healthcare workers. And so this field hospital will not only help us to effectively manage the surge in cases, but will also allow us to be responsive to hotspot areas across the island as the equipment provides us with great mobility. The United States Ambassador to Jamaica, Donald Tapia, in his remarks, said that the Mobile Field Hospital is part of the U.S. Southern Command, Southcom's ongoing assistance to the Caribbean and continued work to help fight the coronavirus. The people in the United States of America greatly offer this field hospital with the capacity of 70 beds valued at over 800 thousand U.S. dollars to the people of Jamaica, confident that it will be put into good use in our common fight against Corona-19. When the current crisis has passed, the hospital will remain, remain as a vital tool for the government of Jamaica to respond to any future public health emergencies or national disaster, whether here in Jamaica or throughout the Caribbean. The United States Agency for International Development and Center of Disease Control and Prevention has committed over $3 million worth of equipment, supplies, and financial support to help Jamaica during this pandemic. All of these donations are testimonial to the generosity and dedication of the American people to the people of Jamaica. Commander of the United States Southern Command, Admiral Craig Fowler, said that both countries have come together to take the important step to fight this virus. This uh, pandemic has upended all of our lives. It's not social. We have not distanced socially, though. We might have distanced physically, but I contend that it has brought us closer together, particularly in this bilateral relationship amongst friends. Today we've come together to take new and important steps in helping victims of the virus and supporting the men and women caring for them. The doctors, nurses, first responders, and medical support teams on the front lines need our help, and we are working together to help. Since March, our team at Southern Command, working with our embassies and USAID, have rapidly responded to partners across this great neighborhood of the Western Hemisphere in the Caribbean and Latin America by providing protective equipment, medical equipment, other COVID-19 related items that are needed for immediate and effective response. As the ambassador said, this field hospital will provide the additional infrastructure uh, to treat up to 90 patients at a time. It's configurable, it can be moved, it comes with training and it comes with a warranty and it comes as an example of the friendship of the United States of America. In news from St. James, an operation conducted by members of the parish's quick response team yesterday led to one man being arrested, over 20 pounds of marijuana being seized, and several tickets being issued. Now the operation conducted between 8 and 11 a.m. in areas such as King Street, Barnet Lane, West Green, and St. James Street was geared towards flushing out wanted men, prosecuting motorists who are constantly breaching the Road Traffic Act and clamping down on persons selling or trafficking illegal drugs. During the operation, four vehicular checkpoints were established and 17 motorists were issued with tickets for breaches under the Road Traffic Act. Also, an abandoned building was searched and two large bags containing loose marijuana weighing approximately 20 pounds were seized. A man who was found in possession of a knife was charged for being in possession of an offensive weapon. The police are reminding business operators to contact them if they observe illegal or suspicious activities within the area. 
Still making news tonight, motorists with outstanding traffic tickets will soon be barred from renewing their driver's licenses and similar services. More on this story with Killeen May. Minister of National Security Dr. Harris Chang yesterday said that motorists with outstanding traffic tickets will soon be barred from renewing their driver's license as well as acquiring fitness certificates and similar services until these outstanding tickets are paid. Dr. Chang, who was speaking at a sensitization session on the new handheld device for the traffic ticketing management system, said over $40 million have been spent to implement the pilot program island-wide to remedy the traffic ticketing issue. The minister said the Jamaica Constabulary Forces, Technology Branch and eGov Jamaica have responded well to the issue by developing a modem electronic system to replace paper-based entries and he is optimistic that this technology, which will merge data through a new software to be used by tax offices, the courts and the island traffic authority will overcome the problem. Reporting from Melo TV News, I'm Kelleen May. In other news, the Jamaica Constabulary Force says the mother of an infant seen in a viral video was picked up by police investigators earlier today. More on this story with Tamara McHale. The police are reporting that the mother of an infant seen in a viral video being coerced to smoke and drink what appeared to be an alcoholic substance is now in their custody. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, confirmed via their Instagram page that the mother of the child was picked up by police investigators in the Red Ground District in Old Harbor about 10 a.m. today. The child is also in the care of the police. The JCF further said that a multi-agency investigation is now underway involving several state agencies, including the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, and the Center for Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sissoka. Some residents of the Red Ground community said they do not know the family involved in the incident personally. They said that the activities seen in the video are not common in their community. Residents at the same time asked for the authorities to have leniency on the mother. And so in no way we're not going to support giving alcohol to any juvenile or any smoking. You know, I then said the age uh, 18 and over. So in no way that that's totally wrong. Yeah. Well, the, the, the mother, yeah, they could have given the mother a blight, knowing that probably she not raise her son that way. So, you know, just at the time, bad influence. So they could give the mother a blight, just the same. It takes a, a village for a child, isn't it? So at the time, she ne they are among they are among that party at that at that time, isn't it? So she never really know who I go on. So I think them can get her blood, isn't it? Yeah, she her parents, yes, and she fe take um fe watch over her youth them more. And even if she said that go on still, I look a penalty that she that go on still, but she can still get her blood, you understand? It's up to the authorities, you know, but you see. People should learn, but I think a bligh, because you know some people are the first time. You know everybody under the influence. People don't think certain time when them under the influence. So therefore, them are gonna do certain things when I call for. You me? So probably no mother can get a bligh see you know, yeah? a lean, a look a lean and see. For Melo TV News, I am Tamar McHale. Back to news from the capital, several persons were arrested in Seaview Gardens last night. The arrests were made after an attack on a police team that went to the community to lock down a party that was being held in contravention of the Noise Abatement and Disaster Risk Management Acts. Reports coming into our news center tonight are that sometime after 11 p.m., the police team went to a location in the community where they saw close to 200 patrons in attendance at the event that reportedly started at 9 p.m. during the island-wide 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew hours. Now the promoter was instructed to turn off the sound and the patrons were told to disperse to their homes in accordance with the law. What reports are that some of the patrons refused and subsequently threw stones and other missiles at the police team, injuring some members. 
One member in particular suffered head injuries and received multiple stitches in hospital where he was treated and later released. Now, during the incident, a group of women also reportedly attacked a female police officer and tore off sections of her uniform. Four of the reported female aggressors were arrested and charged for that particular offense. In other news tonight, the Jamaican Copyright Licensing Agency, Jam Copy, is advising teachers, school administrators, and parents that it is illegal to copy textbooks and other copyright protected materials without a license from the entity or the permission of the copyright owner. Now, the agency outlined that Jamaica's Copyright Act clearly indicates that a license is required before copywritten materials can be reproduced in educational institutions. They added that the majority of colleges and universities are compliant with the law by having a jam copy license. Now, they further outlined that with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, all jam copy licensed institutions have benefited from expanded copying limits to help alleviate the challenges with teaching and learning during the crisis. Back in Montego Bay, students received school supplies in preparation for the new school term come October 5. Here is Colleen May with more on this story. 100 students from five schools in Montego Bay jointly received the school bags filled with school supplies to start the new academic term from a joint initiative by the Salvation Army Divisional Headquarters and the Rotary Club of Montego Bay earlier today. Schools that benefited were St. James High, Irwin High, Barks Road Primary, Carnaldi Primary and Montego Bay Infant School. President of the Rotary Club of Montego Bay, Major Nana Ageman, said this was the second joint project of the Rotary Club of Montego Bay and the Salvation Army for the administrative year to assist parents amid the COVID-19 pandemic. We, we thought that um, with the impact of COVID, um, it is necessary to at least buffer the impact on um, parents so we decided to help 100 students um, in Montego Bay. Um, we spoke to principals and guidance counselors in the respective schools. And each school, we selected um, five schools. Uh, each school gave us 20 names. Uh, we had a gender um, equality, so uh, we have 10 boys and 10 girls from each school. The bag is really, as it looks, it's very impressive. Uh, inside, we do have a lot of goodies. We have crayons, we have pencils, we have pens. Um, for the infant school, we have um, a lunch bag in there, enclosed, and also um, reading books, exercise books. We have masks, yes, um, created, designed by one of our, our, our members, a Rotarian. Major A.G. Mann also noted other joint projects that include supplying over 25 schools in Montego Bay and rural St. James with critically needed water tanks. We do have a, a vision to ensure that schools uh, in Montego Bay or in St. James um, resolve their water um, issue. And so we've been providing water tanks um, to schools um, this year we have already um, given some schools and we are in the process of giving more. Our, our target is to ensure that um, no school in um, St. James um, close their, their school doors because of lack of water. And that is a very commendable um, effort which has been going on for some time now and we are committed to ensuring that uh, we continue until the goal is achieved. We also offer scholarships to students. This year we have already um, given those scholarships to um, high school um, students and uh, also persons from the Montego Bay Community College. We also have a COVID relief program which has been going on for um, some time now and is something we hope to continue. Parents who spoke with our news team expressed the joy upon receiving help for their children from the Rotary Club of Montego Bay, while suggesting that the government offers further assistance to students to better be able to function during online learning. I'm feeling good because I got a call from the school. 
that my my son was selecting to get some school supplies and I was oh I feel relief because actually I didn't get prepared for this school term because of the corona because I'm out of a job from March and I'm a single mom of three this helped me a lot because he didn't have a bag yet I didn't get any shoes any uniform so I was they're wondering where is my first step and and I really appreciate that I get something to start out. By now and next year we don't know what's going to happen fully to each and every one because if this is thing is going to rise up we cannot send the children then back to school. So the only thing I think if the government himself could just put each children with a tablet that they can do their work to focus that their homes drop back I will feel much better with that right now, for now, because there's no way the children them can go out, because we're going to keep moving up, bungling up, and the population is going to get worse and worse. You understand? But I'm grateful for it. In speaking with our new team, students from the Irwin High School expressed much thanks upon receiving their bags filled with school supplies. Um, I really appreciate of the Rota company, and I really like it. It's just a um, good feeling to get in this bag today. I really appreciate the bag because my parents can already afford it. I'm really grateful and I would like to thank the Rotary Club for the supplies. It finally gets to help my mother to take some of the pressures off her. I want to accomplish a lot of things like to help develop my community mostly as part of my priority. I would also like to become a nurse to help them as well. Reporting for Mellow TV News, I'm Colleen May. News, I return with a recap. We'll now take a break and then join Christopher Scott with sports.